Hola, namaste, and a very warm welcome to this talk, Automating Chaos with Linux Chaos to ensure Kubernetes application resiliency. First things first, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, organizing this amazing KCD Africa edition. And I would also like to thank all the viewers and all the participants and all the speakers who have ended up making this conference a success. And I look forward to many more editions of KCD Africa. Moving on, introducing myself. My name is Prithvi Raj and I'm based out of Bhubaneswar, uh, Odisha, India. India is going through a very tough time due to the COVID-19 crisis and I hope uh, everyone is praying for India and we pray for the same that we get out of this condition very soon. I've been, uh, I work at Chaos Native as a community manager for Litmus Chaos and since one year I'm working with Litmus Chaos. I joined my data back in 2020 and then Chaos Native focusing on Chaos Engineering itself. I also am a co-organizer at Chaos Carnival. It's a global conference which hosted its inaugural edition this February and I organize Kubernetes Chaos Engineering Meetups part of the CNCF community every last Saturday of the month. So you can join in and talk about Litmus or Chaos Engineering on Kubernetes and we can learn a lot together. My co-speaker is Cyan Mondel who I mean there's a lot to talk about him but he majorly works as a software development engineer as well as a Chaos Engineer, a chaos engineer coined, a new term which has been coined after Chaos Engineering came into play and He's going to talk more about the technical aspects and I'll, I'll start with the introduction. So moving on to the agenda that we have in hand, first things first, we'll be talking about chaos, what is chaos engineering and a lot of people might be uh, knowing about the term, knowing what chaos tests are exactly, but it's also for the ones who do not know about it. And obviously then we'll be moving on to chaos engineering, the cloud native of our Kubernetes systems, what exactly is Litmus Chaos and further sign we'll be taking forward talking about the CRDs and how you can install Litmus and we'll be giving a technical demo and showing you dashboards and how you can deploy your chaos experiment or your first chaos test. So first of first things first, I would like to thank the CNCF for obviously thinking about chaos engineering as one of the technologies to look up to one of the most a sort after technologies in 2021 and beyond and I think you all might agree that chaos testing is coming up in a grand way. So what exactly is chaos testing? Before that, I'll start with an example. Obviously, as you can see, my my PPT or my page shows, slide shows that downtimes are expensive. So I'll give you a short example of, of how you can think about it. Let's say in India, there are the e-commerce market is developing in a very huge way and Amazon and Flipkart are two major tycoons of, of, of this business. And usually they, they host yearly or annual sales, which are coined as big billion days or let's say Amazon Great Indian Festival. And these sales see a lot of people jumping in to grab the offers. A lot of, there's a spike in the number of users. And usually or, you know, sometimes it happens that due to the spike, there's a condition which causes an outage, which causes a downtime, which le leads to loss of millions and billions of rupees or dollars for these companies. Chaos engineering is a term coined by Netflix. Netflix coined this term and Netflix started off chaos way back in 2011 and they started it to ch test their systems to check how, how does chaos function. So basically chaos engineering is nothing but putting it or uh, putting in or inducing a fault in the system to figure out how will the system actually react when there's an outage or when there's a downtime. So basically predicting what will happen in the future beforehand so that that outage doesn't occur in future or doesn't occur when the system is in production. So why, why is chaos testing important or exactly why should you think about chaos? Because you need to test, you, know, you shouldn't wait. We believe in the chaos first principle. That is why test your system when it already goes through an outage? Why don't test it before? And this also helps in activating the feedback loop in the DevOps system. DevOps engineers and SREs need to focus on chaos engineering so that they can go ahead with proactive testing in production staging in the CI, CD, anywhere, and they can actually predict what can happen and save their systems from these outages. So how is like what? exactly is the state of chaos engineering till now obviously there are standard practices a few companies big companies like uh, amazon netflix flipkart i mean the other apple google the, these companies have already started practicing chaos in some way or the other but this is limited to experts and enthusiasts those who are already aware of what chaos is or those who are already aware of what exactly chaos engineering does they are more into adoption and slowly people have started adopting although the the there's still time to it and obviously it's part of large deployments various companies have come out let's say ibm and maybe various folks are applying chaos in their large deployments but we believe that small deployments or you know individuals should also get started 
practicing chaos because as of now those have already burned their hands those who have already seen what how an outage occurs for them a resolution is chaos engineering but a chaos engineering practice can be a resolution for each and every engineer or each and every company so moving on we can see kubernetes as we know we are talking about kubernetes here it's it's already crossed the chasm it has already reached the mainstream market and as you can see most of the people or majority of the people have adopted kubernetes in some way or the other to build their infrastructure or architecture but what about chaos engineering how, how is chaos engineering faring in the chasm we believe chaos engineering is yet to cross the chasm it's still in the early market and we are seeing you know early adopters there's early adoption but it's yet to see go to the mainstream market in form of a huge business or in form of huge adoption there's still a lot to do and a lot to develop so that people can adopt chaos and there's there's a lot of fear in people minds as well that should i adopt chaos undoubtedly you should go ahead adopting chaos engineering chaos testing for infrastructure and systems moving on how how is it typically done how is chaos engineering practice usually chaos engineering practice to game days and some of them have already integrated them in their ci cds but as of now only sres are, are practicing chaos engineering chaos engineering is practiced by basically q and a engineers sres or devops engineers but most of the developers have still not started engaging in chaos engineering but we believe that every developer should try and practice chaos in some way or the other if not today think about it tomorrow manual planning and execution is happening it's it's obviously necessary but preparing a road map is something we believe can help uh, enterprises or help companies come forward adopting chaos observability is a very important aspect people need to think about monitoring these chaos tests and which is obviously not a commodity everyone needs to think about observing the chaos tests or what is happening so typically as of now there are there's a long road ahead people need to start looking at what are the practices that they need to start uh, to adopt chaos or to get started with chaos engineering because all in all eventually it's going to increase increase your resilience increase your reliability so moving on we'll be talking about cloud native chaos engineering what is exactly cloud native chaos and how does chaos engineering function in the kubernetes world obviously kubernetes is a very dynamic space and every uh, now and then with such a huge amount of adoption and with highly dynamic applications being built there might be an outage or a fault here and there and there are security concerns or there might be concerns of testing amongst engineers and sres so how how does chaos engineering come into play on in the kubernetes way or in in the kubernetes space obviously for example there might be an outage in a pod and a node so experiments like pod delete or a node delete respectively come into play and help you understand and analyze how your system might behave there are a lot of experiments that can come up uh, i i have heard about black hole experiments and un unlimited experiments that that can be possible but what exactly is cloud native chaos engineering so the principles that we believe of cloud native chaos engineering obviously it needs to be open source open source is the future every other technology is coming out to be open source the cloud native world is obviously based on open source technologies which further leads to community collaboration it's very important for the community to come out and suggest changes or work together hand in hand suggesting what are the additions or what are the issues that can be created and how a project can develop obviously with with chaos engineering having uh, custom resources and all the yaml files i think an open api and life cycle management is very important for chaos engineering to be cloud native and obviously scalability we do not talk about scalability but scalability is very important and that is why as kubernetes is being like the principal of kubernetes are being changed by gitops gitops is very important for chaos engineering to be adopted and for users to get a whole new experience and observability as you know as i mentioned monitoring is very important ex ex these uh, experiments and how their function should be monitored so open observability helps users to monitor these experiments properly so moving on litmus as you know follows all these principles and i think is a cncf sandbox project having a pool of amazing experiments we will we'll go to, go back to the next slide and talk about it and they follow all these principles and it is built for modern chaos engineering it is coming up in such a way where chaos engineering the dynamism of chaos engineering will change and testing will will become feasible and easier for each and every engineer out there testing on their kubernetes architectures so what exactly is litmus litmus is nothing but an open source tool set for practicing highly scalable chaos engineering practices for sres developers kubernetes engineers software engineers who who want to practice 
chaos tests in some way or, and want to bring in resiliency in some form to their Kubernetes applications. As you can see, the stats, obviously stats do not define a lot, but it has got a pool of uh, contributors, 1600 plus GitHub stars. I, we are talking about community here at the CNCF, uh, K, uh, KCD, Africa, and community is what is what matters. When I joined back last year, this project just had 60 Slack members and 500 odd GitHub stars, but now you can see there's a pool of experiments, the GitHub stars are increasing, and the project is seeing amazing amount of attraction in the community. And we believe that in the upcoming years, it, it, this chaos testing is gonna be the go-to project or go-to technology to look forward to. With this, I would like to hand over to my co-speaker Cyan Mondel who, who will be getting into the in-depth of litmus chaos and Kubernetes application resiliency. Thank you folks. Thanks Prithvi for sharing about chaos engineering and litmus in general. So I'm Cheyenne, I'm a chaos engineer at Chaos Native and I'm going to talk more about how you can use litmus to inject chaos for your particular use case for your enterprise needs. So to start off with, I am going to um, show you how you can install litmus so there are two ways you can do it either using helm or you can directly apply the manifest so if you visit the litmus docs beta dot netlify app and you uh, move over to this installation section and over the over to control plane you should be able to see um, installation using helm and using uh, kubectl apply the manifest command so this is the 2.beta2.o manifest that is currently uh, we have the current version we have you can use that version or you can go to the github repository which is litmus chaos slash litmus github.com slash litmus chaos slash litmus and go to this folder called litmus portal once you are inside the folder uh, scroll down to see the readme section and you should be able to see installation using uh, ktest manifest so you can either apply the master latest cluster scope manifest or the 2.0 beta 4 manifest uh, so i what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this uh, master uh, manifest for this demo and uh, to apply it basically what i have is a mini cube running right now you can either use kind k3s or even do the same in your uh, cloud provider so now that i already have mini cube running i will just uh, use this command to uh, install litmus in my in my local cluster so while that is happening i would just uh, watch the same in the litmus namespace so when I do it, I should be able to see these three things. Now, while that is happening, I would want to come back to my slide and explain what exactly happens behind the hood. So if you take a look at this diagram, this is basically the CRDs that Linmus leverages. The three primary chaos CRDs we have is uh, chaos experiment, chaos engine, and chaos results. So what we have here is uh, Chaos experiment comes first, which is being fetched from Chaos Hub. Now, what is Chaos Hub? We have a list of eight different experiments listed down in our hub, which is hub.litmuschaos.io. If you visit this uh, particular hub, you would see a lot of public uh, Chaos experiments already up and running for you. So you can pick any one of these um, experiments. Uh, they are predefined and you can either uh, build on top of it or you can just use this predefined ones. This is what Chaos Hub is. You can pull this experiment and start uh, your injecting Chaos directly with the uh, pre predefined configurations. So the Chaos Experiment or YAML is what pulls this particular Chaos Experiment. So the Chaos Experiment CRD is basically a low-level uh, Chaos, uh, your Chaos Experiment itself with the default tunables. The Chaos Engine is what binds the application instance with this particular experiment. The Chaos Engine is what would trigger your uh, Chaos injection in your particular application. So Chaos Experiment is only installing the experiment, not injecting it. Chaos Engine would bind your application instance with the experiment and inject it. And uh, the chaos result is what would store all the default uh, parameters, like the status of your experiment and those things. So uh, it will uh, save a word, it will say if you have probes in your system, it will <coughs> it will save the status of your probes, the success percent and those things. So it's basically store the metrics. So what chaos operator would do is it will take a deeper watch into chaos engine and whenever a chaos engine is triggered, it will also spawn a chaos runner. And the chaos runner pod is who is responsible for spawning multiple chaos jobs and these chaos jobs are nothing but um, the particular chaos experiment which you run so let's say you want to run a pod delete or a container kill so the chaos runner would uh, the, the chaos runner pod would uh, spawn multiple pod pod delete or multiple um, container kill jobs that you have scheduled as per your particular tunables so you can do all these tunings in the chaos engine itself so whatever uh, way you have tuned and overridden the uh, basic tunings in that particular manner uh, the chaos runner would generate uh, successive chaos jobs you can either change the chaos duration you can add 
uh, annotations to control the blast radius and all those kinds of things. So that's it in a high level. So let's go back to the previous watch statement and take a look. So now uh, we can see that this has been finished. If I uh, just get out of the watch command and I see, take a look at the installed steps. So you can see that it has uh, installed this, configured this namespace litmus and the config map deployment services, the uh, rule bindings and uh, all the dependencies that are needed for litmus to run. If you install via Helm or apply the beta manifest, you need to uh, install the name, create the namespace of Litmus first. So if you go through this documentation of how to install, you can find all these different details. But if I, uh, if you apply the latest master manifest, it'll create the namespace for you. Now that we have Litmus installed, and let me go back to the watch statement since this is going to be handy. I'll open another tab and I'll check. A, I'll take a look at the. I'll take a look at the different services that are there currently in Litmus namespace. So we can see that there's uh, the litmus for front front end, the server service, and the Mongo service. So we would need the node IP followed by the port in order to visit our front end service. So in this case, I'll just going I'm going to use my Minikube IP uh, with this particular uh, front end port. There is going to be this uh, colon this particular port. Let me just copy over the port, and with that, I should be able to access the front end service of litmus. So now we have this, uh, I'm going to log in with my admin and litmus credentials. So by default, the username is admin and password is litmus. Uh, once you try to log in, since you are a new user and this is a fresh cluster you installed it on, you should you will be greeted with a, a project creation or uh, onboarding step. So you need to confirm your password if you have if you want to create a new password at the time of the first login. I, I'm just going to keep it the same and my project name would be demo. So this is only a one-time thing for new users. So if you, if you create another user as an admin, they would have to go through this onboarding process just once. So this is my control plane, the litmus control plane that I have. And uh, there are multiple options that you can do. You can schedule a workflow. You have particularly one agent right now. You can see your uh, project up, up at the top. You can see your details. If you have set up an email, which you won't, if you have, if you're a first time login, you have to set it up manually. Uh, so you can set up your email, you can log out, you can edit your profile and you'll see all the project related details like who is sharing, uh, who you are sharing your projects with. So you can invite other people as well into your project. You can give them viewer, editor, owner, different types of access. And uh, there's something called as an agent. So what is an agent? It is basically uh, when you install Litmus, by default we create a self agent uh, which is already running in your particular cluster. So with the help of this agent, uh, we will be running all the chaos experiments in this uh, particular agent so if you want to create an uh, so if you want to um, also include an external agent you can do so you can connect an external agent by clicking on this uh, you have to go through this process to uh, download litmus ctl binary and connect your own personal external agent so we are going to use the self agent for now and uh, if you go to settings you have the teaming option where you can uh, invite new team members who are already a part of litmus and then you can choose the rule like i mentioned and there's another section called as a workflow, which is where your workflows will be scheduled whenever whenever you schedule a workflow. This is where you'll be able to view all the different details of the workflow. If you create a schedule and you do not just run it once, if you want it to be a scheduled uh, cron job, then you can do the same and all the schedules will be uh, visible here. And you also have some predefined templates that you can use to directly uh, inject chaos without any configuration. So you can just use this predefined uh, templates. So what we're going to do is uh, create a scheduler workflow on the particular names on the particular agent self agent that we have already. Now moving forward, we have four different options, which is uh, we can either create from a set of predefined workflows, which is the same as the templates. And uh, let's say you have a particular pod delete or a certain uh, template which you want to modify and extend its capabilities. So let's say you have pod delete and you want some sort of specific. Uh, a pod delete application that are to your enterprise requirements so you can save it you can modify it and save it as a template and uh, from the next time onwards you can uh, click on this create a new workflow by cloning an existing workflow and so this is where you'll find a particular template that you have saved so you can uh, use that template and run your workflows again and again with the same configuration uh, and then you have this option of my hub so what my hub is essentially like i already showed you there's a chaos hub so my hub is essentially your own personal chart uh, your own personal uh, chart so let's say for uh, example I have uh, this demo chart here so you have to make sure that this is exactly in this particular format so you have to have a charts folder and inside of it you can create your own personal chaos experiment so I have generic uh, experiments which are all this node taint, uh, node drain, disk fill, disk loss and I also have a core DNS which is core DNS for delete experiment 
and these are the different metadata, the icons and the package yaml experiment yaml so now uh, if i go to uh, the portal and i select the hub i'll only be able to see chaos hub so if i visit this chaos hub section i should be able to see chaos hub only which is exactly if i view this it is exactly similar to this uh, hub so we already uh, have this inbuilt with the litmus portal so whenever you open portal you should already have a hub pre like uh, already there but if you want to connect your own hub you can choose uh, the connect new hub section i'll name my hub as demo hub and uh, i'll just uh, give my get url which is in this case this one so i'll just use this get url and i just want the mass branch to be master so I, it's public repo so i'm using it as public if you have a private repo you can either choose to ssh or use the access token and just add the deploy key in your get repository and that should work so if i submit it now i should uh, be successfully um, adding the demo hub to my list of chaos hubs so if i view this demo hub now i should be able to see all the generic experiments as well as the um, uh, core DNS experiment which is just one that I had in this Git repo. So this is one feature that allows you to create your own custom charts if you want to and then use uh, your enterprise uh, particular enterprise use case. So you can create your own uh, experiments, chaos experiments and push them on Git, GitHub and then use uh, your own hubs to schedule chaos according to your needs. So now if I go to workflows and I schedule a workflow and I select my demo hub there's also an option to uh, import a workflow from YAML. So if you have a custom YAML already created, you can just click on this and drag and drop or upload your YAML and the experiment would be picked up from this particular YAML. So I'm going to select my demo hub that I have just uh, set newly. So I will keep the experiment name as demo. Let me move forward. So that right now I don't have any experiment. So when I add a new experiment, let's say a container kill and a pod delete experiment, um, I should be able to see a visualization at the right side, which is giving me uh, an exact example of what would happen when, like how this ex experiment would look, how this workflow would look when I finalize it and I see the visualization. So this is just a demo visualization uh, of, a, of a predicted visualization that it should happen once we schedule it. So you can of course click on edit YAML and see the different YAML configuration. So like I mentioned, chaos engine, chaos experiments, so at the top you would have the chaos experiments. These are all the different chaos experiments. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I should be able to see the different chaos engine. These are all different chaos experiments and if I scroll down I should be able to see the chaos kind chaos engine and these are the chaos engine of the two particular uh, experiments that I just installed. Alright so if and or there's an option called revert schedule so revert schedule actually allows you to revert all the particular chaos that has been happened if you turn it to false it will not revert it and your chaos metadata all the experiment details job details will be persistent and will be present there. So now I, if I click on next I should be able to adjust the weights of the particular experiment and I have the option to create a recurring schedule or a schedule now. So if I schedule it now, and this, this is the summary of your entire workflow, if I schedule it now and I click on finish, I should be able to view the particular uh, workflow that I just scheduled. And if I click on the particular workflow's name, or even go back and click on this option to show the workflow or show the analytics, I should be able to see the workflow details. This is how the workflow details would look like. This is the current step that is running. It will install all the chaos experiments. It will spawn up the port lead and container kill experiment. And uh, once we click on the particular uh, node, it will also give us the chaos uh, results as well as the logs. So let's. this is the master node. So that's why we are getting a total, uh, an entire uh, overview. So this is just a graph view. If I move on to table view, I should be able to see the same, but in a table view, which will give us the individual node duration, how much it took and uh, the log and the result. And if I take a look at this watch statement that I had already running, I should be able to see all these different uh, uh, services. Like I, I had chaos experiment, the chaos operator, the subscriber, the workflow controller, and uh, the event tracker. So these are the same things that I talked about when I was discussing the CRDs. And uh, this is the experiment that we just, uh, the chaos experiment that we just created. So demo, this one is running. And since it has installed all the different experiments, it will create more, uh, two, two more experiments, which are pod delete and chaos uh, container kill. And that would be working on this particular target that we have. So current target is Nginx application, which is already inbuilt. Now, if you want, you can change your target to a particular application that you want to target the chaos on. Uh, of course, that will change based on your YAML configurations. And that's how we do it. So let's just wait for this uh, experiment to finish. So now that the install experiment finished, we have a container kill that is in the pending state. So if I visit the logs again, I should be, if I visit the watch statement again, I should be able to see the another uh, instance pop up, which is for an initializing state. And this is uh, the container kill uh, chaos experiment that is uh, trying to install itself and inject chaos. So after container kill, we'll be also able to see uh, 
pod delete spawn up so yeah now you can see container kill runner is being there so this is the chaos runner and it is uh, spawning the chaos jobs so now if i if i visit the container if i visit the container kill uh, node i should be able to see the logs as well as the chaos results as well so right now it's running that's why we don't have any chaos results once it finishes we'll be able to see the chaos results so yeah that's that's it for the portal how you can inject your personal uh, your own chaos so if i also go ahead and change my charts detail in this section let's say generic pod delete if i modify the pod delete experiment here uh, and i come back to this scheduling a workflow and uh, viewing that particular experiment i should be able to also see the changes there so whatever change you do in github will also be reflect in your uh, workflow itself and yeah that's that's all about uh, litmus and how you can leverage it in a in a high level view so this is the exact architecture that I talked about. So you have the portal, you have your uh, chaos workflows and the metrics and events and the operators and the different experiments that are running. So these are all are exported into chaos results. So the chaos results, you can also monitor the chaos results using Prometheus uh, with the chaos interleaved analytics. Also, you can run this on a bare metal environment as well as public clouds, AWS, Azure or VMware with a bare metal environment. So that's all from my side and that's how you can leverage Litmus to your own enterprise requirements and inject chaos as you want. Thank you.